number 52 also coincides with the number of weeks in the year when using seven day weeks based on four seven day lunar cycles, totaling 364 days. The Aztec Pyramid Ruins of Guacamontes, located near Guadalajara, Mexico, is fashioned as a circular step pyramid with 52 levels, and their chief god was none other than Quetzalcoatl. Once again, it is clear that Quetzalcoatl's sacred number, 52, was the fundamental basis for the circular pyramid design applying advanced calendar knowledge. It is now time for modern researchers to acknowledge the mathematical and astronomical wisdom ancient cultures possess. Calendar wisdom provided to mankind by the gods from antiquity should rebuke even the most staunch skeptic. The Egyptians had both a solar and a lunar calendar. The lunar calendar was the artful creation of the Ishida Thoth. Whereas the solar calendar was attributed to the Egyptian solar deity, Ra, Marduk. The Babylonian version of the epic of creation, the Enuma Elish, credits Marduk with creating a 12-month calendar divided into three celestial astrals. This division of the skies into 36 deacons as a means of defining the days of the year is clearly a calendar reference. The Egyptian solar calendar, considered a civil versus religious time system, was very unique in that it was divided into 30-day months termed deacons. These were 10-day periods heralded by the heliacal rising of a certain star. Each star was depicted as a celestial god in the sky, indicating the last hour of the night, and at the end of 10 days, a new Deccan star would be chosen for reference. Could it be the case that Marduk, given his Anunnaki council rank at the time was 10, introduced the Deccan solar calendar in Egypt to intentionally create conflict with his brother Thoth? Both Marduk and Thoth were the sons of Enki, Ta, the great Anunnaki scientist. It appears that the basis of conflict may have stemmed from an unequal distribution of knowledge from Enki to his two sons. Marduk's knowledge of medicine and healing was lacking, as he was clearly jealous of Thoth's ability to bring the dead back to life. The name Ningashida means Lord of the Artifact of Life. To understand the entire picture more clearly, let's dig deeper into the origins for the concept of zodiacal ages and the yearly division of time. Zodiacal time originates in ancient Sumer for festival days, but was also clearly used to establish rulership reign limits for Anunnaki gods and their later liaison kings. The Enuma Elish affiliation with the zodiacal houses assigned to the Sumer gods is clear. Anunnaki veneration was scheduled for the populace by the mandated dates for their contrived festivals. This calendrical control system was used to establish the official activities that the populace neither rejoiced nor mourned over, all on behalf of their calendar masters. For it is well known that he who controls time, in this case the calendar and its appointed festivals, controls the populace that uses it. Is it possible that the Anunnaki gods were ultimately responsible for the rise and fall of civilizations based on the procession of zodiacal time and the calendar? The current common era Christian calendar was introduced by Pope Gregory XIII in 1582 and was termed the Gregorian calendar, which reformed the prior Julian calendar named for Julius Caesar. The question arises as to where and when did the calendar conflict come to head between Marduk and Thoth in Egypt, and what was the result? Violent conflicts developed based on the division methods for Earth's perceived time. Marduk Ra refused to accept the prior calendar division method and was similarly motivated to avenge his father, Enki, whom he felt was the rightful lord of the Earth. 
Thus it seems that Marduk remained in Babylon, in Lil's assigned territory, dragging his family members into conflict in Sumer and later Egypt. As a result of Marduk's defiance over the calendar and the assigned regions, his actions led to his brother Demuzi's death and interrupted false rule in Egypt. For